Now there's no better way to finish off a wall than to add some skirting. This hides the joint between the wall and the floor, which is often left unfinished. Now skirting boards come in a variety of styles and materials, and whichever one you choose is completely up to you. I've gone with a very simple rounded over that I'll be adding a quarter round to to match the existing skirtings in the house. Now there's a few ways to do this, but follow these steps and you'll see how easy it really can be. What you will need, your chosen skirting board and quadrant, mitre box and saw, panel pins, hammer, a stud punch, pencil and tape measure, adhesive, and cork. Then depending on how you want to finish your skirting board, paint or sealer, a brush, appropriate color filler, and some sandpaper. Now I find it easier to paint the skirting board before actually installing it. I've gone with white as we're planning to paint the existing skirting boards white too. Now the first thing we need to do is measure up our wall. Skirting boards come in 3.6 meter lengths. So for this wall, we'll need to join two pieces together. What I like to do is loosely lay them on the floor with an overlap to accommodate for the cut later on. Now I'll hold my skirting board against the wall and make a mark on the back face in line with the wall. I can then make a rough line in the direction of my mitre, then take it to the mitre box and make my cut. Perfect, now it's 45 degree. Next thing we need to do is mark up our next two cuts. So we'll use our off cut, hold it against the side and mark it up exactly the same way. Hold it against the wall, mark off the sides of the wall, directions of the mitre and cut them. Those two mitre cuts meet perfectly, starting to take shape nicely. Next thing to do is the exact same on this side. Mark the back edge, line in the direction of the mitre and make our cut. Now when it comes to joining up the two pieces, the best way I like to do it is by cutting a 45 in each piece in the same direction. That allows them to butt up nicely together, covering any imperfections, and also gives you a bigger surface area to glue them. The best way to do that is push them together and draw a mark where they meet. Then draw a 45 in the same direction across them both. And then repeat the steps to finish off your run. So there we go, all my cuts are done and they dry fitted perfectly. Now these are all external cuts. If you're doing internal cuts, then this will be the way to do it. Butt your pieces up into the corner and roughly draw up your 45 degree. Now place that into your mitre box and make your cut. Now it's time to secure our skirting to the wall. Best way I find is lay your skirting on its face and apply your adhesive. Now when I start attaching these to the wall, I like to start in the corners to make sure that my mitre joints butt up neatly. Okay, my joints are matching up nicely. I'll just use a few panel pins just to hold them into place. I like to use panel pins in all my mitre joints just to keep them together while the glue sets. I then use a stud punch to countersink the nails so I can fill them and completely disguise them. So as you can see, the skirting's in, looking great, but you can see because of the level of the floor that there are some gaps and imperfections. This is where the quarter round comes into its own. As you can see, if I place it there, it disguises and hides all those imperfections and gaps and finishes it off perfectly. So now we can mark up and cut our quarter round in the exact same way we did the skirting boards. My quarter round's all cut and dry fitted. The next thing to do is secure it to the skirting, using a bit of adhesive and some panel pins to hold it to the skirting board. Remember, we're not sticking it to the floor. The floor, especially being wood, will shift a bit and cause cracks, so we want it free floating and only secured to the wall. Again, I like to start with the corners just to make sure that my mitre joints butt up and match up nicely. Now don't forget to countersink your nails with the punch so that you can hide them with some filler. Skirting's in, nails are filled, last thing to do is just fill the little gaps that are caused by the uneven wall. Very easily done, a little bit of contractor's acrylic, run a bead along the top, work that in with your finger, and that'll disguise any small gaps. Allow that to dry, then give it a light sanding and touch up any imperfections with some paint. There we go, job done, and what a difference that's made to this wall. Completely cleaned up that edge and made it look great. Now for a full range of skirting boards available at Builders, visit the Builders website. For more how-tos just like this, check out the YouTube channel. Get to Builders, get it done.